G'day folks, in today's video I'm going to show you how to grow your own broccoli from sowing the seeds all the way through to harvest and also how you can increase that harvest to give you more broccoli for your belly. I'm also going to run through how we like to grow broccoli in the aquaponics for you folks interested in aquaponics and also give you a couple of pointers on pests that you may find munching on your plants. Now to get us started, broccoli grows best through the cooler months and likes temperatures between 16 and 24 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 60 to 75 Fahrenheit. That means that you folks in the cooler regions can start your broccoli in spring and let it grow through the summer. Folks like us in warmer subtropical climates, we like to sow them out at the end of summer and can grow them all the way through until the following spring. Now I'll hand it over to a less hairy and slightly younger Rob to run through how I like to grow broccoli in soil beds. Sowing the seeds out is fairly easy. I grab a good quality seed raising mix or make up my own if I've got the bits and pieces on hand. Dig a little hole about six mil or quarter of an inch deep, pop in a couple of seeds, cover them back up and then make sure the soil is kept moist and away you go. Now in the cooler climates, it does make sense to try and get a jump start on your season by sowing them out inside or in a um, warmish greenhouse in your flats or punnets or pots. That just gives you a little bit of a head start on your seedlings. And once things um, start to warm up, you can transplant them out into the patch. Now, if you're in a warmer climate like our own, a good idea I think is to probably start them off about a month before summer ends. Once things start to cool down, you can then transplant your already semi-advanced seedlings out in to a well-fed bed. As for the bed prep itself, what I like to do is rake over about two inches or five centimeters of compost or well broken down horse or cow manure over the top of the bed. I like to pop a nice handful of quality castings or compost into the hole the plant will be placed into. The plant goes in, I firm it down nicely into the soil because I find they start off better that way. Give it a quick top dress with some more compost and away you go. As for spacing, 30 to 50 centimetres or what's that, about a foot to a foot and a half apart uh, and that will give you a nice spacing between the plants because different varieties can actually grow rather large leaf wise. Now broccoli do like to be kept well high so I make sure the soil is nice and moist but never sopping wet, something that's very easy to achieve in these self-watering wicking beds that we like to grow in. As for fertilising, you're pretty much all right until about a month into the growing cycle. Then I like to give a little bit of a scattering of compost just around the, the roots of the plants. Or if you don't have any compost on hand, um, maybe some slow released organic based fertiliser pellets will help. I also do like to give them a um, liquid feed after that every um, two to three weeks, just to keep the, the plants nice and healthy while they're producing the main head and then after that the side shoots. Now time to harvest will vary between varieties and also your climatic conditions. My favourite is Calabrese and it generally tends to give us the main head. Um, anywhere up to about uh, two to three months we start to see the nice head form and then after that's harvested like you saw we get side shoot after side shoot. But it will depend on your variety. I've seen some that will mature faster than that, um, 75 days at the longest and others that will take anywhere up to 120. So we're here at the aquaponics grow bed now and I thought I'd show you a couple of different ways that you could plant out these guys. Now to begin with, um, you will notice that there are a couple of seedlings in some of these cells and in aquaponics, like with hydroponics, it really isn't a big issue because they're getting nutrients delivered directly to the roots and they're not in competition with other plants as such. So it's really not a big issue to plant these guys out so close together. Now, the easiest way to plant them out, and the way that I pretty much will do it now, is just to use some sort of a pipe to push down in the loose media. Might be a bit hard if you're using rock. And then I'll pop your little seedling in, remove the pipe, and then just move your seedling up into the depth that needs to be. And that's pretty much well it. And you'll find that most of the soil will stick to those roots. So when the plant is pulled out in a couple of months time, that soil will come with it as well. Now the other way, some people like to do it, first of all they dig their hole and what they'll do is they will pull their seedling out gently and then wash off the roots in some water. This is actually water from the aquaponic system and this is actually the method I used to use to begin with, just don't worry about it now. And once the majority of the soil is off, pop that in the media, lift him up, give him a bit of support and backfill around him. And there you go. 
we've got four broccoli, or well, four plantings of broccoli in this bed now, ready to go. So just quickly for any of you aqua curious folks out there, I do have an online beginner's guide to aquaponics. Won't get into it too much here, but there is a link you can follow up there and down in the description to find out more about it. It's 1995 US and is available in a few different languages. Back to the vid. So now these four plantings are in the aquaponics, we'll suss out how to extend your broccoli harvest. Now we have three plants. We have one plant over the back there with that nice large head on it. We have another plant, you can probably see the stem down there. We harvested that head last week. And we have this plant here we've been harvesting a fair bit of over the last couple of weeks. It's got a couple of heads that need to come off today. Now this plant over here, as you can see, the central head has already been harvested. And this is one of the side shoots. So even though this isn't the main head, it will give you some idea on what to look for when it comes time to harvest your broccoli. So with this broccoli here, what we've got is some of the little um, bud sections starting to move away from the central head itself. Uh, when the kids were younger, we used to call them little trees because it looks a bit like that from underneath. Now the optimal time to harvest your broccoli, so you get the most crunchiest head you can, is just as this starts to happen, you'll know that the head's as large as it's going to get and you're going to have it at its crunchiest, at its peak basically. So that's when we generally lop them off. All these little tiny buds down in here, they're actually little flower buds. Now if you leave the heads on and they continue to mature, the little florets will grow even longer and you'll end up what looks like small little broccolini shoots. From there you'll get the odd one or two that'll bloom into flowers. Um, those flowers, by the way, are totally edible and we use them in salads all the time. In fact, heads like this that start to divide, when you cut them up small enough, they make an awesome little green salad with a couple of other veggies thrown in, some capsicums and carrots and whatnot. Another thing I like about them when they go a little bit lanky like this is you end up with um, longer stems. So something like this is ideal for the um, chicken soup that we make, just a basic little chicken and vegetable soup uh, with a couple of Asian flavorings in them. Um, we just put these raw in the bowl and then we pour the soup over the top. It tastes absolutely fantastic. As for other parts, the stem. Um, you can eat the stem all the way down to the main stem itself. You can cut it up fine, you can throw it in your stir fry, um, you can throw it in your soups, you can dice it up or shred it and pop it in salads. It's actually a very versatile plant and I do know a lot of people who will eat the leaves. We have eaten the small leaves when they're about that size, um, when they get a little bit larger, they get a little bit tough and a little bit bitter. But when they're that size, we have shredded them up and added them into salads before. Um, all in all, it's one of those plants that you pretty much will eat all of it. And there is no right and wrong when it comes to harvesting it, because even if you do let the heads bolt, you can still make something out of these loose little sections and the flowers. So I wouldn't be con too concerned at all if you don't pick your heads when they're at their peak. So now a couple of pointers on how you can protect your broccoli from some common pests. What we have there is a cabbage butterfly caterpillar. And on this leaf up in here, we have a cluster caterpillar just behind that little webbing there. Uh, those guys there are actually quite invasive and ca can cause a lot of damage, so we'll deal with them first. Uh, they're from a moth and it doesn't take long for them to strip leaves. I actually found one of the nests. What it looks like is a load of tiny small eggs, probably hundreds of them. And once they hatch, they get a voracious appetite and they can devour a cabbage like this one here in a matter of days. The other pest caterpillar we get here is the white cabbage butterfly caterpillar. Uh, they're pretty common all around the world. Now these little fellows, they like to come in and lay their eggs on the undersides of leaves. Uh, they're pretty easy to spot. They're just a very small white dot and yeah, I just go along and just squish them when I find them. To protect the plants from caterpillars, you can use a couple of different methods. You can exclude them by maybe growing in a greenhouse. Another way you can go is using fish and animal friendly insecticides. I use one called Dipol. It's basically made of a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis. It only targets specifically these guys here. The one we buy here comes in a sachet with 10 grams of the powder in it, enough to make up 10 litres of the spray. Now there's no way I need 10 litres of um, spray for this size bed. So what I've done is I've weighed out um, individual little bags with two grams worth of powder in them. That means I can just whack it in my little two litre spray jug and go around not only the aquaponics, but the other beds down the back just to give them a little bit of protection. Give you a look at another pest that we get quite a bit and that is aphids. So these little guys here are sap suckers and can be a real pain in the butt to control. Some varieties of females are self fertile, so they just keep popping out young after young after young without having to mate. These guys can be controlled in a number of ways. Um, I'm rather partial to just coming in and squishing them uh, when I see just small amounts like this on a plant. 
Uh, other things you can do is make up a basic soap spray using one to two teaspoons of a pure soap in one litre, or that's a quart for you folks in the States, worth of water, uh, giving that a bit of a mix up and um, yeah, spraying on the plants. Apparently it washes off the waxy coating from the outside of the aphid and they dry out. And the same treatment can be used on thrifts and mealy bugs as well, if you have issues with them. You can also get critters that'll feast on aphids and other sap sucking insects. Uh, fellas like, whoa, he nearly fell off, this little baby ladybug. That's called a ladybug nymph. And these little fellas, they can look after a number of those aphids every day, as can their parents. So they're really good to have around in the system. And one of the reasons why I don't like spraying too much, I mean, if you get a really bad um, infestation, you can use the squish method. Um, squish all, all that you can, and then blast them with the water hose. Um, just the hose from the tap is good enough, and that will just crush the aphids and the mealybugs on the strips because they are a soft-bodied insect. Another way to reduce the chance of an aphid infestation is thinning out the older leaves on the broccoli. I found it really doesn't hurt the production, as I generally do it after the main heads have been removed moved and the plants are just pumping out the smaller side shoots. So there you go folks, now you know how to start off your broccoli and also how to extend the harvest and hopefully take care of any pests if some do find your plants. Uh, before I go, I really would like to thank you all for coming along and thumbing these clips up and leaving a comment down below. Always love to say g'day to the regulars and don't forget I do have that aquaponics beginners guide available, 1995 US, links are down in the description for you aqua curious folks and a huge thanks to you folks who are supporting us on the YouTube membership platform and also our Farm Your Own Yard Patreon page. That's enough of waving this fellow around. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.